even as Kenya looks to some soft economic growth rebound in the third quarter of 2020, ending tomorrow. But tonight, joining me to discuss the Kenya's real decisions is a partner at GBS Africa, Agnes Jital. Agnes, good evening. It's good to see you on the show. Good evening, boss, and thank you for having me. We appreciate your time coming here. Is this decision to leave interest rates unchanged uh, expected by the Kenya Central Bank, Njoroge, and the rest of his team? Uh, look, the package, as they say, the package of policy measures implemented back in March when we had when Kenya reported its first case of COVID-19 have suddenly had some positive effect on Kenya's economy. Remember, we were projecting the economy to decline by 0.9%, but after intervention by the government and the CBK uh, team, the economy is now expected to grow at 1.5%. So suddenly maintaining the, uh, the headline rates at 7%, it's the way to go. Suddenly welcomed by a lot of people in, in the country. Hmm. Uh, do you think this level of interest rate uh, is uh, strong enough to support the economic growth that Kenya uh, seriously needs? Given the current situation of uncertainty, yes. And I think what the central bank team have said, they are going to continue assessing the, the situation and they will intervene if and when they, they are expected to, to. So suddenly maintaining this from March, we've seen these were introduced back in March, 7%, and it's, it's the next meeting is in November. But before then, in case of any uncertainty, of course, the team is well empowered to intervene. If, if they're required. So I'm going to ask you, as a Kenyan yourself, uh, Agnes, uh, what sectors do you see as supportive for an accommodating monetary policy position? W what sectors within the Kenyan economy? So you realize what happened when when the pandemic, of course, came to uh, uh, came to the to the to the global economy uh, sectors like um, the logistics sector the Kenya is very dependent on international trade international market so our hot tree culture our tea prices were affected but this uh, this rate will support uh, sectors like the manufacturing sector, the travel and tourism, which has been hardly hit by, by the pandemic. So uh, real estate um, and, and, and also the agriculture sector. So suddenly supporting key economic sectors that will help Kenya, uh, Kenya's economy uh, to, to, to grow. How strong is Kenya's uh, fiscal position right now? Talk about current account, debt, uh, foreign reserves and all that. Boston, this is a conversation we've had, but uh, Kenya is over and over again about debt distress for a lot of African countries. Kenya's debt is currently at 66%, uh, which is above the 60% level that IMF wants. Um, the government has continued to say this is not alarming because 52% of this is foreign debt, with 47% 40, owned by the Kenyans. So Kenyans investing in the economy buying their own debt because they are confident that the people in power are able to manage it. Uh, current account deficit at 5.1% um, and, and foreign reserve is at a comfortable rate of about $8 million, which is about 5.2 input cover, which is good enough to support the, the Kenyan currency against any shocks. So let's talk about sure. Kenyan banks. I'm sure uh, in any country, whether you talk about Nigeria, South Africa, uh, banks always come to a very important conversation. You need the banks to transmit the policies, the, whether it's monetary or fiscal policies, especially into uh, small and medium enterprises within the Kenya space. So the Kenyan banking sector is very strong and re resilient. You've recorded uh, over and over again the success of key uh, banks like the Equity Bank, the Standard Chartered, and the big banks like the Kenya Commercial Bank, which have operation across the East African region. So they've been very supportive of the economy. They have continued to lend to the private sector and, and, and suddenly um, intervening to ensure that uh, the, the 
the small uh, medium enterprises are able to access finance. But this is a conversation that is ongoing, that access to finance is one of the biggest challenges. But for once, the banking sector in Kenya responded positively and, and, and supported economic activity during this during this pandemic. But of course, of course, they have welcomed the, the, the support they've, they've received from uh, the central bank. Uh, what about uh, uh, Kenyans in diaspora and their remittances? I think the last figure that I saw was something around 39, 40 billion Kenya shillings as at the end of August. You always ask me about the diaspora, you know? <laughs> If I can own the millions of Kenya, that, the million of dollars that Kenya Caribou. send home, yes. uh, I would be very happy. So, Sandy, one of the reasons one of the reasons the shilling has been stable is because it's been propped by the the foreign uh, the, the remittance from the diaspora, but also that we had some Kenya got some money two billion dollars from World Bank and IMF, so that has managed to support the Kenyan currency. Yes, the diaspora remittance has continued to grow despite the pandemic in the in the Western economies, and it's grown year on year by ten percent to about. $274 million, showing that the Kenyans have continued to support the vulnerable in the country, which is quite welcome. And I, and I do hope that the Nigerians in the diaspora can us are doing the same. I guess it's in the story across the African continent. But certainly, this has had very positive impact on Kenya's economy, that they have and uh, ensuring that our currency remains stable against the, the U.S. dollar. So, so when Kenyans send uh, uh, money home, what do they send them for? So mostly for domestic purposes. And then this is a conversation I think we, we have sort of initiated. How can we move diaspora away from domestic? It's important to send diaspora remittances for domestic purposes. But how can we channel these funds towards sustainable projects like infrastructure, Africa financing deficit? of $200 million per year and African combined sending over $45 billion annually. This could go to building roads, rails, airports, uh, health sector and the education sector. So yes, to respond to your question, the money mostly goes to support their families, particularly mm. those who are vulnerable during this time. Um, you know a conversation on how do we channel that money to sustainable investment projects. I, I agree with you. I agree with you, Agnes. But again, we need to say thank you to all of you who are in the diaspora, Africans who are still sending money home, sometimes from your savings despite the pandemic, trying to support your families back home on the continent. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Thank you so much, Agnes Gita of GBS Africa in London. We thank you very much.